for loving me. You went to Calvary, and there you died for me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You rose up from the grave, for me new life you gave. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You rose up from the grave, for me new life you Five minutes break. No. Yeah. We, eh? go ahead. Eh? Yeah. Coffee. No, go ahead. We go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Except you want. Coffee. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I don't need any break. Yeah. So why are you all going away? <laughs> <laughs> because we had the Oh, you are, you are, you are. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. You must go. Okay. Now, now, you know, this is the very special aspect of this type of uh, seminar or this type of workshop, we cannot plan anything in advance so much because Holy Spirit has a big plan about us. It depends upon the persons who are called for this. So I had, a, uh, I, I, was talk, I was thinking of talking about gifts of the vision, gifts of discernment, gift of prophecy, all these things. But now, from the sharings itself, we come to know many people have got the gift of healing. Amen. And in the Holy Mass, the Lord told me, give them more understanding of the gift of healing and pray for op opening the gift of healing. So that is what now I am going to do for today. You know, first of all, we must know the gift of healing. Uh, I always say, I am not a healer, but I am a believer. So all of us, correct? Yes, sir. We don't say we are healers. So that is based on Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, the last words of Mark. The last words of Mark, Swarpal says, Believers have these signs. Mark chapter 16, 17. These signs will accompany those who believe. Are you a believer? Yes. yes. Are you a believer? Yes. So first of all, you say, I am a believer. So all this, this word must be in me. As a believer, every believer has this gift. In my name, they will drive out demons. Okay. They will pick up new languages. They will pick up serpents. They will speak new languages. That is the gift of tongues. They will pick up serpents. That is another gift. Now, don't hurry on it. We will not do it now. <laughs> And if they drink deadly things, it will not harm them. That also we will not do now. <laughs> the last word, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You know, uh, to be practically, before I came to charismatic or renewal or all these things, as a young man, I have heard this every time in the gospel. So one day, one of my aunt, her leg was having <coughs> such an open wound, you know, open wound. 
and she was in great pain. We can feel she is crying. And uh, we were in a village. This is many years back, maybe 35, 40 or more than that. When I was a young man, I felt uh, this word came in my memory. So I told her, shall I pray for you? She looked at me, what? You, you are a boy, you are a very young man. You are going to pray for my healing? So generally we think these are supposed to be done by a priest or some senior people, you know. I told, I remember Jesus said in the Bible that a believer has this sign. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will be healed. It is just like an innocent faith for me. When God said it, it should happen. It is not I am doing, and the Lord is doing. Then my aunt said, oh, okay, nothing wrong in praying. We are not taking any antiseptic injection or something or antibiotic which can create some reaction. <laughs> okay, you can try. So I was so happy and I I really laid my hand on that open wound, you know. Generally we may put a glove or so. I did not care for anything. I put my hand on that open wound and prayed. I was expecting a miracle, but nothing happened. <laughs> then I told her, don't worry, when you take a medicine, you need several times you have to take for several doses, then only it will be healed. So I will again pray for you tomorrow. Something like that I told. Okay, okay. Then, but still I used to come and look at her, what's happening to her. But even by night, nothing happened. So then in the sleep, while sleeping, I still have a hope. The Lord said it, so it will happen. Mm -hmm. The Lord said it. Mm -hmm. It is written in the Bible. So it must happen. Then as soon as in the morning I got up, I ran <laughs> to see what I said. And to my surprise, that was totally him. <laughs> And then she hugged me. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> old ladies, you know, they think this is all possible only by priests and such yeah. Yeah. such holy people, not a boy like me. <clears throat> this is our pro uh, So this was the first experience of my healing. But then after <clears throat> I came into the renewal, the same word used to have uh, loudly in my... Then I got this phrase. Whenever somebody comes for healing, whenever I pray for healing, I say, I am not a healer, but I am a believer. This is what I also feel all of you should pick up. Confirming this, because Jesus said it, every believer, Every believer has this. Every believer. This is why church is not growing. A believer has a sign. And particularly country like country like Europe or uh, Ireland with uh, such a long tradition. You know, so many missionaries came from Ireland to the rest of the world. Even Mother Teresa came from Ireland. She came as a school teacher. Mm -hmm. Then how she went from India? <laughs> Look at that. She got a national funeral from India. A government which is Hindu dominated government gave her such a funeral which was given to Mahatma Gandhi. A national state funeral. And her most important point, which is related to healing, which made her success was because of 
again a word of God like this, which Jesus said, when I was sick, you visited me. And so she explained that Jesus did not say that sick man was like me. Jesus said, I was that sick man. You understand? Jesus said, when I was sick, you visited me or you nursed me. So this is again should be our understanding. We must go by where better. That very word, he says, where a believer has this sign. You lay hands over the sick, the sick will be healed. This is not simple idea. It is a truth. Like when God said, let there be light. The light came. The same way you believer, you lay hands, it will be healed. Not because of us, because the word he said. Therefore it will be healed. So Mother Teresa said, It is not uh, general sick people, mother's point was. In those days in Calcutta, there were a lot of lepers. And once somebody has terrible leprosy, nobody can, nobody can keep the person in the home or in the hut. They throw that person out. Where to throw? In the, in the drain. Can you understand this? Heavy drain where the water or uh, rubbish things are flowing in that. And the Lord said to her, pick up that. Such wounds and such uh, worms coming out. But she believed in this word. Jesus said, when I was sick. So I am that sick person. That must be our thinking when we pray for healing. And that is how her ministry becomes so successful. Now I am remembering once uh, it was in, when I was in Singapore, I was in our Catholic Church for doing mission. So somebody said, a Chinese lady want that I, a prayer. So when those days Chinese means they are, they are not Christians, they are uh, against Christianity, something. So we got a very good enthusiasm in Chinese, okay. Then, but when I prayed, I felt I asked the priest, you also accompany me and uh, because although they are publicly not Christians, some are secretly baptized. They don't say anybody, but that is also in India. There are so many Hindus and Muslims, publicly they are Muslims always, but secretly they have very good connection with Jesus. Even they go secretly receive baptism. Yeah. Because publicly they cannot because of the political problem. Anyway, something like that I felt. So I told this priest to also take blessed sacrament. So if she might have received baptism, then we can give her confession and the last sacrament, etc. She is going to die because of uh, last stage cancer, that is what all says. So she was, her relations invited. She was covered with a white robe up to here, as if waiting to die. So as soon as she died, they have to just put this <laughs> white cover fully. Like that she was. So she said, why you came? Why you took so much? I knew I am going to die. It makes no difference today or tomorrow. So I said, 
I came, we came because Jesus said, when I was sick, you visited me. Eh? He said, when I was sick. So Jesus identified you, a sick person, as Jesus himself. When I said this, her face becomes so bright, her eyes become so shiny. I again said, Jesus said, when I was sick, so Jesus identified the sick person as he himself. Then, say, okay, then pray for me. Then I, then I could feel her tears coming from her eyes. Then I said, Are you a Christian? Are you baptized? So she looked here and there, nobody else is there. She said, Yes, yes, I am a baptized. Praise the Lord. But I did not live a good life. I had this, 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 so many since she started telling. Wait a minute. I have a priest with me. He will hear your confession since you are a baptized. So you don't tell me all that sinfulness. You tell him and he will give you confession and absolution. And after that, he will give you the last uh, uh, sacrament of healing and the Eucharist. Then I told the priest, now you take confession, this is the situation, and I went out. And a little long time, the whole life confession is done. And afterwards he called me, I said, now you let us give her a uh, anointing of the sick and the Eucharist. So I said, that means uh, today was the priest was telling that you will receive three sacraments confession, Eucharist, and the healing, uh, anointing of the sick. You will receive three sacraments. That will make you completely different. So I thought she will die. You can die like a saint. Okay. And all this is done. And after this is done, we said, now we go, goodbye. And she said, wait a minute, I will come to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> then it was for our surprise. She got up and walking and coming to the door. <laughs> <laughs> power of the sacraments, power of healing. It is so memorable to me. Because we never kept any contact those days, we have no hands or things like that. So, such amazement God can do to us. You know, okay, now, in order to grow in the gift of healing, the best thing is we must, there are 42 miraculous events in the New Testament, 42. Events. Every, it is good that every event we learn. Every event of healing is different. Different. So it is like a homework. You read the Gospels, you will find beautiful events of the healing. Like in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4.23, in chapter 4.23 says, he went all around Galilee and was 4.23. He went all around of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing, said, what shall I attention? Curing every disease and illness among the people. Every disease and illness. So 
So what is the difference between disease and illness? We have to understand. And every means every. <laughs> every. So like that we have to recognize how Jesus was doing. Every. And then, so one thing is associated with that, proclaiming the gospel. That is what I was telling, no? We are not simply healers. We are, we have to proclaim the kingdom of God. That Jesus incarnated, God become man, he took our sins, he paid the, he took our punishment, he took our curses, he suffered for us, he died for us, he is risen for us, and that risen God is in you. At least this much we say. That is called kerigma, the most essence of the gospel. That is the good news. If you got only one minute to speak in this one minute, you must say that. Suppose you are waiting in a bus stand for, look, somebody is waiting in the bus stand, a bus is coming, you have got few seconds to evangelize that person. Hello, how are you doing? My name is Thomas Paul. You know, I am a Christian. Jesus loves you. He lives in you. He born for you. He became man for you. He took your sins. He died for you. He is risen. And the risen Christ is in you. That bus has come. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> That is evangelization. In few seconds, you should speak the good news. And it is not you, it is Christ speaking, so that will impinge in them. That will work. Like a seed, you plant it, it will sprout, and in an appropriate time, it will help that soul. So, healing must be done always with the proclamation of the good news. Good news. And so, my, if suppose that person is not a Christian, we should say Jesus did not come only for Christians. Jesus did, is not a private property of Christians alone. When Jesus came, there were no Christians. Uh -huh. Then what for he came? He came for you. He came for the whole humanity. Therefore, he, he is in you. He bless you. He heals you. He delivers you. He will do everything for you. What do you want? What do you want? So, that should be our proclamation. He said, he went all around Galilee. None of them were Christians. And Galilee is also famous for pagans, pagans, teaching in their synagogue. That is not pagans, that is synagogue is Jews. So he went to Galilee, that is pagans, and the synagogue, that is Jews. These are two dimensions. Proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. So we see some physical sickness, that is the disease, physical sickness. But illness can be psychological problems, depressions, or mental problems, or something like that. You see, so many people are sick psychologically. <coughs> How can we do? We take to a psychiatrist, they give some medicine, and he smiles. By medicine, the psychological problem will not go completely. It's only to maintain. But Jesus can heal. In Kolkata, Mother Teresa has a house only for psychic sick people. There are nearly 300 of them. Normally in their home they are crazy, they are violent. But in this house, they have 24 hours Eucharistic adoration, 
and these people are very quiet they are sitting in front of the lord and praying or doing something but god knows them so in the eucharistic adoration is another <coughs> place where you draw power of god for healing so okay i explained today morning about the personal prayer today when i was praying in the personal prayer morning the lord told me you will use the gift of healing today already the lord told so early morning itself god will tell us what are all things can happen today in your life so in the personal prayer so coming to the point now after this another event of the healing is chapter 8 matthew chapter 8 jesus was coming down from the sermon on mountain from the mountain he was coming down so a leper came these lepers are not supposed to come out from their camp but i imagine jesus was preaching on the mountain so maybe the lepers camp might have been at the valley of this mountain so he might have heard the voice of jesus so i you know i have made a lot of animation films so therefore i did some research for all these thing and i put all that thing so in the leper camp they were there then this leper hey i am hearing a voice come to me those who are heavy laden hey that is the voice of jesus come to me i feel like going to him Then the other leper said, "No, no, no! You are not supposed to go. If you go there, they will stone you, and you will die. Anyway, I will die. So why not? If they stone me, let me die like that. But I will go to Jesus." They said, "No, no! You should not go. That is forbidden to go out. No, I will go to Jesus." <laughs> These are my drama, but this is real. Otherwise, why should he come? because he heard the word of jesus and he came all other lepers did not come he came because and when he came see chapter 8 now you see what he did and then a leper approached approach you have to read very carefully every word in this did him homage Can you imagine so many people are coming down Jesus is coming down the road is full of people but in the road he might have prostrated down and worshiped him Sultan he did homage when we see he did return we did homage means that means this leper realize this jesus is god then only homage is happening no? and then said lord if you wish you can make me clean it's full confidence clean means you can heal my leprosy generally no one believe the leprosy can be healed but he said you can make me clean he and jesus stretch out his hand touch him he not only wish to him yes i will be healed he applied three elements here he will with his might he spoke with his mouth he touched with his hand see the sequence of healing as yes, i will you be clean that he will in his mind and he spoke with his mouth and he stretched his hand and because it is forbidden to touch a leper is forbidden to touch a leper we know in corona time we never go near the corona 
affected person. It was forbidden. Because of the sickness will spread. But Jesus took that risk because he's God. And he wants to show that compassion. And in this, there is another element. It is a symbolic that I have come to heal such deadly sins. A leprosy is an external sickness, but spiritually many have internal leprosy. Internal sinfulness, internal leprosy of the soul, which nobody can heal. So Jesus has two dimensions here. Not only external healing, but the internal healing. Lepers are completely thrown out from the community. Even if he's a Jew, he cannot come in the synagogue if he's a leper. The priest says, no, you have to be put into the leprosy uh, camp. You cannot come into your home also. So they are thrown out from the home. They are thrown out from the spiritual community of the... They are thrown out from the society. I had been to many leprosy places because of Mother Teresa. Sisters were carrying them, so I had to give retreat to. So in India, some of the government's leprosy sanatoriums are handed over to Mother Teresa sisters because nobody is ready to care them. Therefore, I happen to go there. Okay, so, yeah, any sicknesses has this aspect. We go to some very decent sicknesses, <laughs> but many other sicknesses has a rejection from the family, rejection from the society, Rejection from the spiritual group also. So, because of that, the emotion of that sick person is very, very terribly damaged. Correct? So, we have to handle this situation in two dimensions. Okay. So, here then, immediately that person was healed. Now, the next paragraph, another healing. A centurion servant. Now, in this first instant, Jesus is touching and healing, but the other situation is completely different. Centurion comes and says, my servant is sick, but he is far away in my home. So Jesus says, I shall come to your home. See the readiness of Jesus. So whenever somebody is sick, we must be also ready to go and visit that person in their home. Here, this sick person, the centurion, is a Gentile. It is forbidden for a Jew to go into a Gentile. But still Jesus said, I shall come. But centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that you come under my roof. You say one word from here, there my servant will be healed. Uh huh? What a faith! Now, did I say about it yesterday something? No. no. So, why he said like this? He also believed this Jesus is not simply a prophet or a son of a carpenter. He is God. So this is everywhere in the healing we can see. Whoever received the healing, they believed this Jesus is God. For us, we have no doubt about it. And so, the church fathers explain why he said, you don't have to come. The reason is, when you know he is God, his presence is omnipresent. <laughs> his presence is beyond the time and space. Understand? So God don't have to physically go there. His word, if he say one word, that word 
is enough. So that is another way of healing. Now in the first you see the leper coming to him, Jesus touching to him, healing. The next healing is completely different. That is why I say every healing event we have to examine. Jesus said, go, according to your faith, be it done to you. He is not touching, he is not physically seeing a person, but this man's faith, she appreciates, I have not seen such a faith even among the Israelites, that is even his own apostles. Okay. What is the time now? She said, okay. So that is another healing. So like that, now I am just showing you a homework method <coughs> in order to grow in the gift of healing. You go through every incidence of healing in the Jesus' life. Examine it word by word. Pray about it. Question, ask questions to you. Now, as an example, now one more is coming. Matthew, Mark's, Mark, Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, 5. We know four people carried a paralytic. When they reached the house where Jesus was doing the healing prayer, they can't even go near such a big crowd. So, they, they could think, okay, we can't do it, we take him back. They did not think that. They were so determined. We must definitely reach him to Jesus. But there is no possibility. So what they did, they did certain illegal thing. What is the illegal thing? Illegal thing is going up and break off in the roof of somebody's house. If the police is watching, even video camera is shooting, <laughs> or what is that, CCTV would be <laughs> recording, they would be arrested. They took that risk. This is Pope Francis's teaching. They took the risk. Yeah, there can be anything, but we must help this man to come out of this situation, even by the risk doing some extraordinary effort. So Jesus was inside, suddenly debris falling down on his head, probably he looked up. Oh, he saw some bulbs, some bulbs glittering. Four people, eight bulbs. What are that? Their eyes full of faith. They lowered him and they are standing there. <laughs> yeah. And then it is written here, Jesus saw their faith. This man has no faith. He is a big sinner. His sins were so great, he became paralyzed. So when he is paralyzed, means his nerves are all frozen. He has no memory, nothing. But because of the faith of that four people, now what did Jesus <laughs> say? What did Jesus say to this man? Pick up your mat and walk. So this is what I say. You have to watch exactly what he said in the text. Yeah, he said this, but before that he said something more. What is that? He said, hmm? Sins are forgiven. No, before that something he said. One word. My child. That's which, that is more important. He is a sinner. That is secondary. First of all, Jesus accept him as his own son, his own child. This must be our attitude towards the sick people. 
God, in spite of they may have many sinfulness, they may have many sicknesses, God loves him as his own child. They are not baptized. We don't know what religion they are. So what is important? Child. So these small, small words you have to pay attention. Child, your sins are forgiven. So our compassion. In other places we see there was such a crowd he moved with the pity and compassion. And they wanted to touch his hem of the cloth. And he healed them all. So for us, we have Jesus, we are eating Jesus, Jesus is in us, continuously touching us. So how much more Jesus' healing grace should flow through us? So when we are doing the ministry, we are not in the time of these Bible days. We are receiving the Lord in us. He is in us. He is touching us continuously. And he wants to pour out through us to the people. So healing gift is not simply to heal them, but Jesus wants to flow through our hands to such people and give them an experience of Jesus. And through that, the society will change. Through that, the world will change. Okay, so that is Mars Gospel. So like that, every situation. Now, I think the teaching we can stop. Now, I will, I think I better, we pray for each one of you mm -hmm. for the gift of healing to open in you, open in you. And from now, what's going to happen is, uh, once you go after this program, automatically somebody will come to you. Oh, I am sick, I have this pain, that pain, can you pray for me? What will you say? Yes. Oh, you must go to the parish priest, you must go to Dog Shrine. Eh? Go, go, to Brother eh? go to Brother Thomas Paul. That is not the answer anymore. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> That's the point. Holy Spirit will send people to you and you must immediately listen to this. Ah, believers have these signs. They will lay hands over the sick and sick will be healed. But still you will say, oh no, I don't know. I may be, I don't know whether I pray you will be healed. All these things you will say. Maybe you can say that for your uh, for your, uh, to show your humility, but pray for them. What, what do you pray? Mm. What, what words do you say? Yeah. What you say? I, tell, I tell you, yes, you want to ask yeah. something? Uh, a good friend of mine is in hospital with excruciating pain in his knee, and a great man of faith. What do I tell him, uh, Brother Thomas? Do we go to him or what do I say to him? Uh -huh. He's excruciating pain in his knee, this man. And uh, what do I say to him? I call to his, to him yeah, to you lay hands over him and pray. Huh? pray you had, you I pray, lay. I, I pray over him, is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. What prayers do I say? Just heal Yeah, that are all I will now tell you how to do it. Do you first ask oh, yeah. the person, oh, right. mm. would you like me to pray? If that person come to you naturally, that person like you to pray. So sometimes they may not even know that prayer can heal. So you have to evangelize. You have to say, you know, Jesus said, every believer can pray for healing. You can say, you are a believer, I am a believer, so we together can pray. That way also you can say. And then you say, even if you don't believe, I believe. So all those things, once you start, once you start, uh, once you start this uh, 
activity at that time holy spirit will tell you what you should do what you should pray that is also jesus said jesus said in luke chapter 12 12 you don't have to search for the words the holy spirit will tell you exactly what you have to say yes now since you ask in general if somebody has very excruciating pain spiritually you have to help tell them you know jesus also suffered a very great pain so shall i shall we offer this pain to jesus and shall we offer this pain for the suffering souls all the conversion all this is a method of prayer but all these thing they may not be interested to hear the sick person that you take it in your mind oh lord this person has such a big pain i offer this for the conversion of people who are in mortal sin things like that and all you can pray but when we start speaking so many things to them they may feel little bad you first thing you say in the name you you say jesus loves you jesus suffered for you jesus forgiven your sins jesus lives in you so they will say jesus lives in me i am a sinner yeah he has come to take away your sin jesus said i have come not for the righteous but for the sinners jesus has come not only for the holy people but for the sick people and the sinful people and ah oh, okay okay so at least one sentence you must say about jesus taking the very word name of jesus some people say oh, don't take the name of jesus you only say god god that is not enough you must take the name of jesus because the name of jesus what is the meaning of the name of jesus what is the meaning of jesus what is the meaning of the word jesus in catechism paragraph 430 says the word jesus means god saves it is a hebrew word the very word jesus in hebrew it's a hebrew word that means god saves god saves so if you say jesus that itself mean god saves oh my jesus <laughs> God saves. And 430 in Catechism. 430 in Catechism. Okay. So now you ask questions. Any other questions? Yeah. 12-year-old, every 12-year-old grandchild. Yeah. And the last time she was down here, I said, we're going to collect mommy at the airport. and i said we'll go to mass first and she said nanny do you not realize i'm an atheist now they don't practice and i'm not judging them because i love them yeah, it's, it's alright no, yeah. just they don't practice so she doesn't get the the mass and she hasn't got full communion or confirmation yeah. they are baptized mm. now she has autism and she also has dyslexia and is bullied very badly in school yeah. so how do you talk to somebody like that that you know the kind of you're not indoctrinated yeah. if you know what i mean yeah. for daddy because he doesn't want any holy things yeah, yeah. in that, that, is, that so that, how do you kind yeah. of pray you have to her? you have to understand that was exactly the type of people yeah. in the bible so none of them were christians yes none of them in all the jesus's public life mm. were they going for holy mass no no, they, no. Well, they believe me? No. No. Not quite. I don't know. Yeah. Probably so they were. Jesus said they were like sheep without shepherd. So there, he felt compassion. Yes. You know what is the meaning of compassion? Yes. yes. Very simple. Company in passion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have to be compassionate to such people. We don't. you said we are not judging 
even if they are not autistic or down syndrome they are very good strong, healthy very clever yeah. very high iq but yeah. um not so that that is we have to be compassionate exactly. jesus heals through his compassion yes we must have a compassion to them so how would you how would you introduce yeah first of all no no first of all i said the personal prayer when you do the personal prayer yes the way i have given you pray to holy spirit in you in that one is a sanctification mm -hmm. cleansing so inside us there are many strong nature that oh no i don't like these people I, some people might have told us very bad things and uh, very strong things all that thing we must when we cleanse it will go yeah. you know there is called there is something called tender love <laughs> we forgot that word it is no more in the dictionary <laughs> tenderness so all these things comes in our heart then we said fill me fill me fill me fill me fill me fill me what is that love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control love joy peace love go when i visit and i yeah no first now every day in the morning we must pray at least one hour I sold to that man ten minutes because out of the <laughs> <laughs> but for us it is not ten minutes. Yes, so we wake at four and then one hour ideal. But if okay. you don't have one hour, at least pray ten minutes. Right. If you have got lot of activities, you have no time. But at least pray ten minutes. Fill me, Holy Spirit, fill me. Love, joy, peace. See, that is why Saint Paul says, "You may have all the gifts, you may speak like angels, but without love, you are only a noisy gong and a clashing cymbal. You may have faith to move the mountains, and you may have prophecy, you may have vision. It's all about charismatics, you know. But without love, you are nothing." He said on his name. without love i am nothing so this is very important when we learn about the charism there are three chapters chapter 12 speak about charisms chapter 14 speak about charism chapter 13 speak about love love so this is some <coughs> expert says it is like sandwich you have two slices of bread that is chapter 12 and 14 So in between chapter thirteen is cheese, butter, marmalade, chocolate, all these things. Do you understand? Yes, yes, yes. That is sandwich chapter. <laughs> chapter twelve, thirteen, forty. Yes. Well, Thompson, uh, yeah. you're saying there about before we do the healing of the intercession prayer. What, what's the intercession prayer? Because um, we missed it this morning, you know. Yeah. But, Uh, the moral, so, like, um, I mean, for, for example, say if somebody was uh, sick and they were like praying over them, uh, if, if they didn't have faith or they didn't believe that when you were praying with them on, yeah. uh, could you could you offer that as a suffering? Their suffering, say, well, I think they're suffering, and leave it with me, so I give to Jesus for your healing. Yeah. Could, could you could you do something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is also intercession is and it? also healing okay. so intercession is uh, okay uh, intercession means you stand for that person intercession must be understood jesus is the intercessor okay. and jesus says you are all my branches so mother mary or the saints they are all like branch of jesus we pray and through jesus it goes to the father So Jesus also pray for us, and Jesus, along with Jesus, we can pray. So intercession means we stand for that person and pleading, "Oh Lord, that person have no faith. That person is having this problem, this problem. 
I pray for that person mm. yeah. standing in the breach. Yes, so, like that. And that is another big area we have to learn more of things, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but at least you say, I see like these four people, these four people carried him, one paralytic. Yeah. They are also intercessors. They are believing, oh Lord, we believe for them. The, that paralytic has no faith. So Jesus saw their uh, their faith and healed the paralytic. Mm, yeah. So, so intercession is also another way of gift of healing. Yeah. So when we have a gift of healing, one thing it is like a miraculous healing, but in that also we are acting like an intercessor. We are praying for this person taking the burden of their pain and suffering, etc. So, uh, coming to your point, to have compassion for these people, compassion you cannot buy from the market. You have to pray little time in the morning to fill you with the love, joy, peace of the Holy Spirit. When you pray, you will feel and then when you meet such people, you, you now today somebody was saying some kindness was flowing, peace coming, all these things, it will happen in you. You feel compassion. You feel another emotion. Maybe that person says, no, 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 I don't want, you don't pray for me, don't touch me, don't take the name of Jesus. No, go away. Violently that person may say, but you will smile, hello. Hello, I love you. Mm -hmm. You want a chocolate? Shall I give you a chocolate? <laughs> Somehow you will, in spite of their violent nature, we feel love and compassion. Yeah. Yeah. That is the first thing on the, particular for the children or anybody. We have to love them first. When we love them, then already they feel the presence of Jesus. Yes. Nothing, that lovely reading, nothing can separate us. From the love of God, correct. Today's, in fact, that was today's reading according to the Magnifica, that uh, Acts, uh, Romans chapter 8, 39, yeah. Yes, uh, any other questions? Yeah. I have to go to Mass now, I'm on the Eucharist. So I wonder, could you pray with Yeah, we pray for you now, first. You okay, said, then. Put your intention into the chalice. Yeah. That holy mass. Yeah. That yeah. Okay. Now we will do that. First, now we we eh? put, uh, put on all the lights. You come. You come here. You come sit here. Now we pray for. We all of us pray for her. Like this, we will do for every one of you. Okay. So you can stretch your hand towards her, and we come come sit with me. Yeah. Let us. Pray. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Is Peggy there? Peggy? Is Peggy there? Shandala Halabala, Halabala, Halabala. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, open the gift of healing. Open all the charisms in the name of Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come, you also pray with me. Take this chair and sit near to her. Take this chair. Ah, oh, there is a chair. Bring that chair near here. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come, come, come. Yeah, you come here. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Stretch your hand on her. No, no, her. Pray for him. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Shandala, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shala, hallelujah, Lord. Open the gift of healing. Open the gift of healing and all other things. In the name of Jesus, be open, open, open. 
Praise the Lord. Okay. God bless you. Anyway, you are coming tomorrow, yes. correct? Yeah. Now, uh, now let us complete the prayer. Then afterwards, if we can answer everybody's questions. Now, I think this way we do. You sit here. Peggy, you sit here. No, Ma Marcus, can you change this camera a little bit? That's it. No, no, not you sit. You sit here. Let everyone come here. We do the prayer. Uh, oh, oh, one, one, one minute, let me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But, uh, or take the camera a little more back. Yeah, uh, okay, okay. Let me see now. Okay, now. Now you, you move here. Now you move. Little more, little more inside. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So let everybody pray now for him. So it was a very good experience today for Paul that he had many gifts of healing. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is your Praise you, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, open the gift of healing. Open all other gifts, especially on gift of healing. That believers have this sign, they will lay hands over the sick, and the sick will be healed. Shantana, Halabana, 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 Jesus. You said it. You will do it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Maybe today you 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 go home today. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe today itself you may get a chance to pray for somebody to be. <laughs> yes. Come. Next person. Come. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Shandala. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shandala Halabana Praise you, Lord. Shandala. Come behind us. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shandala Halabana. In the name of Jesus, open the gift of healing. In the name of Jesus, open all carries and especially the gift of healing. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah, next person. Come. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shandala. Shandala. Praise you, Lord. Shandala. Oh, Lord, open the chasm so we gift of healing. Gift of healing. Believers have these signs. They will lay hands on the sick. And the sick will be healed. Amen. Amen. Yes. Shandana Halabana 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 Halabana. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Shandana. Come close. Shandana. Praise Jesus. Shandana Halabana Halabana. Oh, Holy Spirit. Open the gift of me. Oh Jesus, thank God for all the characters. Today as you promised, open more and more gift of healing. Amen. Amen. Yes, one by one. Come quickly.
praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shandala Halvanavi. Shandala Halvanavi. Oh Lord, open all carries them, especially the gift of healing. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And also, when she lay hands over the sick, Jesus, you said it. Believers have these signs. They will have the hands over the sick. Have the sick will be in. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Next, please. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit. Anoint her, Lord, with the gift of healing. Open the gift of healing. Open the gift of healing. Lord, bless her. Bless her. Believers have this sign. They will lay hands over the sick. And the sick will be healed. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Next. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shandala. Praise you, Jesus. Shandala. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Believers have these signs. They lay hands on the sick, and the sick will be in Glory. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Open the gift of healing. Open the gift of healing. Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open the gift of healing. Believers have this sign. Amen. Hands of the sick, sick and they will and the be sick well. Will be healed. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Next test, please. Praise you, Jesus. Shandala Alvada. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit. Bless him, Lord. Open all cats. Open all cats. Especially the gift of healing. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shandala. Believers have this sign. They will lay hands on the sick. And the sick will be healed. Amen. Somebody can sing a Holy Spirit song also. Yeah. Give me oil in my life. <laughs> Open the gift of healing and gift of intercession and gift of healing. When you lay hands over the sick, the sick will be healed. Give me joy in my heart. Oh, Holy 
Often the gift of peace, or what all can, especially the gift of peace. Open all cancers, open all cancers, in the name of Jesus, open all cancers, bless, 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 whoever believes in me, they lay hands over the sick and the sick will be healed. Oh, you know, 
not your the temple. Know ye not, know ye not your the temple. Know ye not, know ye not your the temple. Praise you are the temple. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, open all candles. Open all candles. The name of Jesus. Open all candles when we lay hands on the sick. The sick must be healed. Oh Lord, open all the charisms, open all the charisms, especially the gift of healing. Especially the gift of healing. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And Yes, 
Oh, Holy Spirit, open all the cans. Gift of healing, especially the gift of healing. When you lay hands over the sick, the sick will be healed. Amen. Amen. Everybody over? Now, now, yeah. And a question now, okay. Is there anybody who has any severe pain who needs a healing right now? You, you have a pain? Yeah, come here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where, where is your pain? What is the pain? Uh, the low back. Because I have an injury back. since yeah. 88. You have a pain. Since 88. Yeah. And you have a pain here. Now. Yeah, a little bit in the. Here. Yeah, okay. 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 Now, is there anybody feel confident that you can pray for her? You can come and pray. Yeah, come. Yeah. Now you pull this chair and sit here. Yeah. Now you pray. Yes. You can keep the book here. You pray. You can even put your hand at that place. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Pray. Jesus said, "Whoever believes in me." Jesus said, "Whoever believes in me." Uh, put this to mm -hmm. lay hands over the sick and the sick will be healed. Amen. Do you believe now Amen. she will be healed? Yes. 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 Father, in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' precious mighty name, be healed in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Spirit, thank you, Jesus. Praise you and thank you, Jesus. Praise we glorify you. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise and thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise and thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise now Jesus. Now you stand up and see. Um, What's happening? Can you sit and speak? I don't feel anything. Hmm? It has been prayed over numerous times since. But now what's the situation? Yeah. Now is the pain is there or not? You turn a little bit. The, there's a the, there's a small bit there, a little but bit. it usually affects me when I stand for a for a period of time. Don't worry, we will once again so pray. You, 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 there is a little bit still there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Once again, yes. Praise you, Jesus. Praise thank you, Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, we offer this pain. Along with your pain. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise and 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 thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise and thank you, and glory to you, Jesus. Praise and thank you, amen. Praise and thank you. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Now you Praise see. Jesus. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. Praise Jesus. I don't feel like, but I came. I okay. Keep Don't them. worry. He, 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 no, okay. God wants we to believe it is healed. Okay. Amen. okay. Amen. But if you would have had pain, you would have immediately said, yes, I have pain. Mm -hmm. You are checking whether there is pain. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, but if you had pain, you would it would have come very easily understandable, you know. Okay. Yeah, I still yeah. feel that. Yeah. Maybe you can just scoff yeah. a little more. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Anybody else have okay. some pain? Please so come. Pain. We are exercising this. Yeah. Now you can I'm go. You know. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> now. Okay, whatever the Lord yeah, the Lord will do it. Yes, you come.
No. What is your pain? And I have bone on bone. Bone? On the right hip. Yeah, hip. Hip. And yes. arthritis. Okay. You. So, so now there is a pain. Mm, uh, if I did certain things, but I'm not going to go for surgery. No, no. I, to at the moment you have some dis discomfort, can you recognize now when we pray something? When I turn, yes, yeah. I will. But I just like to pray for that. And yeah. I would like to. So, how many of you, really, <laughs> who wants to pray for her, for healing of her, of her hip joint? Hip joint. Yeah. Come, come, you come. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, pray. You can sit and pray for her. You can even show her what exactly is. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, let's all pray. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, heal this hip joy. Heal this hip joy. Heal. Oh, Lord, bless her. Heal her. In the name of Jesus. Blood vessels, tissues, bones, and muscles come back to normal healthy condition and be healed. Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Okay. Amen. 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 Okay, you stand and see. Yeah. Yeah. You twist your, you move. Hmm? Praise the Lord. And I hope I'll be praying for continuation of the muscle too. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Anybody else? Anybody else have some pain now? Okay. So now you ask some questions. How to, uh, uh, any other questions on this? See, everything cannot be done in one day, you know. So as you start praying, the Holy Spirit will help you. And tomorrow also, in the morning, in the personal prayer and other situation, you will come to know. Okay? Yes. Now I want also another testimony. Just somebody can say what have you gained in this one or two of you can come and speak in general how you felt this program what way it helps you what way it touched you some little information for all those who are watching this in the youtube <coughs> and also we are going to have this program again uh, already announced that it will be in uh, uh, December last week, the 27, 28, 29 here. So you look forward for this and you can inspire others to come for this. <laughs> and on Monday, this Monday, we have a healing of family tree in, what Lucan, is the place? Lucan Church. So you are welcome to come, Divine Mercy Church. Family tree healing in Lucan, is it online? Uh, it will, uh, I don't know if the internet is good, but it will be recorded and put it in the YouTube. Okay. If there is a live pop, uh, network, then I will make it live also. Yes, come. Yeah. Let me say one question, uh, Brother Tom. Yeah. When you're praying with somebody, hmm. how can you differentiate if they have to have that stuff in them? They have that? That the Lord has given that stuff in them, I mean, that they need it. How do you know that's something given to them to endure a victim's soul, you know? No, once again, say it. Say it once again, I did not get your point. Um, when you pray to someone that's sick now, yeah. we often hear it said that they're given suffering, you know, yeah. to purify them. Yeah, so that is always there, but you can pray. And pray see, always, yeah. uh, even if, yes, Every pain has a suffering. Every sickness has a suffering. We are, when we are praying, automatically the suffering is offered to Jesus. Oh, okay. That is always. Yeah, and yeah. then certain times no healing takes place. So that, that is a very clear sign 
they have that person suffering the Lord want. Mm. But nevertheless, we don't know how long the Lord want. Mm. So we pray. Exactly. If the Lord want to heal, He will heal. Yes. Even if no healing happen, we should not be worried about it. Mm. Yeah. Just one more question. Yes. yes. Um, like, I've been told different times, the priest said, I've seen there, um, the lady while back now, she's in the hospital and for two weeks, and she can go home, she's got late six of them. Can you give me a, give him a mic? Can you come here and speak? You come here. Huh? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've been told different times by priests, like yeah. in confession there last October, priests. Yeah told me, he held the Bible up, he said yeah. the Bible will sanctify you and the Bible will heal you. So last December, I rang a lady, she's down, down, down no, no, not Mio, mm. Westport, and um, she's after her hospital and she's heart complications. And <coughs> all her family died in their cemeteries with heart problems as well. So she, she's been two weeks in hospital, so she's home now, she can't drive, she lives alone, she can't drive her car, mm. got a mask or nothing. So I was stuttering the phone. And I said, Lord, please give me some reading for this lady, you know. So the Lord gave me Psalm 73, 26. Mm. So it says, my heart and my flesh, my, my heart and my flesh may fail, but I, the Lord, is the strength of your heart and portion forever. So mm -hmm. I told her to read that every day for in the morning going to bed at night, you know. Mm. And uh, three weeks later, I rang her up and I was in chance to phone. And she was exposed with joy. She said, yeah. I was at the doctor yesterday, he did a CT scan on me, do all the blood pressures, her heart now is 100%, so she's back driving now and everything. Very good. So, Very good. so, Very good. so, so I just reckon that I feel now, like, it's, it's so many places in the Bible, that you said 42 places of healing. Quote that, keep just giving that little reading. See, and keep, it, it tell them keep like, repeating you know, it. It's like this, uh, yeah, yeah. Bible heals means, it is not touching the Bible physically, that's yeah. what you mean? But the high Bible is alive and active. Like this is that's person, right, yeah. but what is important yeah. is that particular word of God. Yeah. But uh, now uh, we should, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. Bible is the word of God, but it is to be very better that we use the word of God. Oh, okay, right, yeah. That is more meaningful. In yeah. that also, I would, and what we understand from the New Testament, Jesus' own word, Jesus is the healer. And when he say a word, the healing takes place. So you should, when you, you, you should also, this I wanted to say, I already said when we, when Jesus said, when we take the word of Jesus, you are, speaking as Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the same thing when Jesus did that you are doing or Jesus is doing through you. So it is very appropriate to speak the word of Jesus. Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, nothing is impossible for you. Or woman, your faith is great. Whatever you ask will be done to you. Jesus said. Yeah. So you take, pick up, uh, better to pick up more words of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then awesome. when you, so when you read more gospel, the words of Jesus. Now it so happened once, uh, I tell you an example, I was making script for the little children uh, catechism. So somebody said, Thomas Paul, that is too heavy. Children may not understand it. Okay. Then I asked the Lord, see everybody, the parents are telling, the children may not understand this. So what should I do? Shall I make it very light, little different? And Jesus says, no, I have made only one Bible for little children, for you, teenagers and big people. Only one Bible. The making them understanding is my work, not your work or even not his work, the child's work. And then Jesus said, I was in the house of the widow whose son died in the Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. 
in Nain, a village called Nain, and her only son died. I went there. I wiped off her tears, but that's not going to be a solution. <laughs> I put my hand on the dead body of this young man and said, Young man, I said to you, erase. And the young man rose. Now the Lord is asking, He rose, is it because he understood what I said? No. He was dead. Yeah. He's dead. <laughs> and Jesus is telling, Young man, to the dead man, you know, young man, I said to you, erase. And that man rose. Jesus is asking me, he rose, is it because he understood what I said? Such is the power of the word of God. Lazarus died and his four days are over, his body is thinking. Jesus came to the house of Lazarus, we know, finally, Lazarus! Come out! Is it because he understood? Talita kum! Young girl arrives. So Jesus' word has such a power even to raise the dead. That is our faith. So, therefore, all the Old Testament scripture is also word of God, but that is all fulfilled in Jesus and in us who are believing in Jesus. You are yeah. another Jesus. <laughs> you see here, you see here in Roman in uh, paragraph 795, Saint Augustine says, "We are not only Christians; we become Christ." 795. See, let us rejoice then and give thanks that we have become not only Christians but Christ himself. Because we are the body of the Christ. He is the head and Holy Spirit is the soul. So it is good. We, we, we can use any word but it is better to use the words of Jesus with the understanding it has power even to raise the dead. Grace, that's great. Okay. That's, thanks thank very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the, thank you. Oh, sorry. Okay. Next, anybody else? Yes. yes. <laughs> I just came to thinking our lives, yeah. the person is healed. Yeah. But someday, yeah. someday they are going to die. Yeah. So, so yeah. God says, be not afraid of him that can kill the body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. But at the same time, see, the Lord's purpose is not only to give a person a good health. God's purpose is to use this as an evangelization, a testimony. The person was telling, I was not able to walk, I was sick so many years, but the word of Jesus touched me and I was healed. And that has an evangelization work. That is God. See, you see in the Bible so many figures, but is there anybody did a healing work like Jesus? No. Did Abraham or Moses? No. no. So Jesus is only through Jesus the healing take place is also to make the evangelization. You, you know, there are so many miracles will happen. I remember now there is one doctor, his name was Bob, Dr. Bob in America. Uh, he was a very good surgeon, very good surgeon. But one day a sick person came to him and uh, he, that person's whole throat was completely open. Throat, such a sickness, such a wound was and he just opened the bandage and was so astonished. And he knelt down there, oh Lord, what can I do? You do something. And
and then he got up suddenly he see the whole area is healed oh my god and now what he did you know he resigned the job as a expert surgeon and he began a healing ministry oh my god <laughs> so god's ways are and so the the faith god want to bring faith in this situation so these are all needed to increase the faith for our people and our land and i i feel all of you you are a very special people in we had many such type of conferences but i never had such a fast working of the charisms i am telling you and i feel very easy work otherwise i had a lot of suffering also when the charisms happens you know so it is god's big anointing for this country for this land for the people for your family we need to do something exactly according to the bible here so many people are doing so many things forget we don't say that okay hmm? so let us focus on completely biblical the word of god so the lord will work miracles and then it will go in big dimensions <laughs> so let us thank god and conclude now yes. thank you jesus yes. praise yes. you jesus yes. hallelujah peggy come here where is peggy where is peggy, where is peggy? shala hala bala hala bala hala bala praise you lord thank you let us clap and thank god hallelujah lord praise you jesus we thank you jesus hallelujah praise you jesus thank you lord hallelujah 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 amen amen please sit down